Hi, I'm Danelle Street here with Beejucation.com and today I'm going to show you how to make this great pendant that I'm wearing today. We're going to do a folded flower technique and we're going to build on that by folding a banner, flowers, and other blanks in all sorts of metals. We're also going to be annealing and soldering and stamping on metal. If those techniques are new to any of you guys, go ahead and go to the website and check out our free classes on all those techniques. You're going to find out lots of information about how to do that. But most importantly, we want to make sure you guys are safe. So check out the torch safety class as well and have fun making this great pendant. For the stamping portion of this project, you're going to need letter stamp sets, a brass mallet, and a bench block. To fold your flowers and your banner, you're going to need a bench block, a sharpie, chain nose pliers, and round nose pliers. Additional tools you're going to need are emery boards, the hex wrenches, fat daddy cutters, the 1.8 hole punch plier, and then we also have the 1.5 hole punch plier and a needle file, a round needle file, because if you notice in the pendant, if you have a hole right in the middle, you're not necessarily going to be able to reach with the 1.8 hole punch plier. So the long jaw of the 1.5 will enable you to reach everywhere. And then the round needle file will help you drill the hole to accommodate the nut and bolt. These are the oxidizing and polishing tools you're going to need. Baking soda, safety glasses, pro polish pads, q-tips, some safety gloves, silver black, and a cup of water. For soldering and annealing, the items you're going to need are a refined butane fuel. I used a Max flame torch in this project, but you could use any butane torch. A cool cup with tweezers, the copper solder paste, a soldering pick, penny bright, and a kiln brick. Also, to protect your workstation, you want to use a thick piece of steel metal. The materials you're going to need for this project are a copper pendant, a sterling silver banner. You could use a variety of blanks and different metals, but today we're going to use copper and brass flowers. We're also using sterling silver tags as well as a brass tag. And we're also using nuts and bolts for this project. They do come with washers, but I choose to not use them because I like the look without them. So the first step you want to take is to stamp your banner that's going to go onto your pendant. You want to make sure that you place your banner on your pendant and kind of center it so you know where the folds in the banner are going to be on each side and mark with a sharpie a little border for your guideline on where you want to stamp in the center so it's going to look like this here and if you notice right where the sharpie marks are that's where it's going to bend in the back and fold around and you'll still be able to read all your stamping So now it's time for the fun part, to solder your banner onto your pendant. So we have everything you need here. The first thing that you want to make sure is to always think about safety. So we have everything here, the kiln brick, our cool cup, our torch and tools all handy close by so you don't have to walk away from anything. Um, but we could just go ahead and get started with soldering. The first thing you want to do is make sure that your two pieces are touching together closely because if they're too far apart then the solder is not going to work. So if you notice here, um, I don't know if you could see that in there, but there's kind of like a little gap in between. So that probably isn't going to work very well. So what I'm going to do is make that space really squished down like that. So to do that, I'm going to just bend it a little bit either with your hands or with your chain nose pliers 
just right on that guide that you put for stamping, I'm just going to bend it up a little bit. Do the same thing on the other side. Bend it up just a tad. So now you can see when it's sitting on there, it's closer together. So I think we are good to go. So I'm gonna put that down and apply the solder paste with a pick. I'm using copper solder paste. And you don't need too much solder, but you wanna make sure that you have enough. Not too much, not too little. Might be a little hard to see. Squeeze a little more, oh, oh, and it does that. It squeezes that a lot, so just put that aside. And what's nice about this project in particular is I'm not too worried about if it's, if the solder comes out the bottom because I like the oxidized look underneath. So I'm just gonna press that down. And because it's paste, it's just gonna stick nicely, even though it's bent, bending up. And now we could turn on the torch and get to soldering. So when you solder, you just wanna make sure that you don't have to worry about going too fast. You want to take your time. Um, if you notice the flame, I'm just going to heat up the whole piece. And you'll see some smoke and little flames. That's the paste burning off. I'm going to keep going. I'm going pretty slow. I'm not really close and I'm not really far away. And I don't know if you saw that, but the solder just flowed. So we're all good. So I'm turning off my torch and now make sure you use your tweezers to pick it up. And now you could quench it. And this is fun too, it makes a sizzle. So there we go. It's attached. So when you make the folded flower, you'll notice the more you, the more flowers that you fold, the harder it is. Um, you, your hand starts to notice it. So something to do to get away from that is to anneal the metal first. So that's what we're going to do here is we're going to anneal all of our blanks before we fold them. You'll notice that the lighting is a little bit different because we turned off the lights and we wanted to do that so you could kind of see the glow that the metal, that happens to the metal as you fire it. Once it glows, then you know that you've reached that annealing point. We also added a little bit of Sharpie marker to each of the blanks too. So that's a good little cheating method that you could do is mark it with a sharpie and then once that burns off you know that you've pretty much reached that point where you could stop firing it so let's get started so if you notice that start started to glow and the sharpie burned off so now I'm moving to the next one I saved the silver for last and I put them all in one little group because the silver kind of goes faster so I didn't want those to melt up.
Here we go. And now we could quench them all using your tweezers. You can pick them up and put them in your cool cup. After you anneal all your pieces, you'll notice that there is all this black residue left on all your pieces. That's called fire scale. And what you can do to get rid of all of that residue is you could either pickle it in a crock pot with a pickle, or you could use this great product called Penny Bright. And I like to use Penny Bright because it's just um, something I have in the house and I don't have to worry about plugging anything in. So what you could do, it comes with this little sponge and we're just going to rub it all over, kind of like you're cleaning your pots and pans, and scrubbing all the stuff on the bottom of your pan. Same concept. And I personally don't mind if a lot of the black stays in the nooks and crannies because I think it adds to the look of the piece. So I'm not going to go too crazy with cleaning it. Like I think that is pretty good for myself. So when you dip it in the water, you could really see the difference. So before and after. Look how shiny it is. So we could just keep going and cleaning all the pieces to get ready for folding. When you anneal brass, you'll notice that a thin layer of copper is actually pulled to the surface from the heat. And so your brass actually looks copper. So this piece I already um, used a Pro Polish pad to buff off that layer of copper. Um, this piece I didn't. So all you have to do is grab your Pro Polish pad and just start to polish it and you'll see that the brass starts to shine through again. So, I don't know if you could tell the difference, but it just starts to shine back up to the brass color. Now we could go ahead and start folding everything to give it all the dimension and the flow that the piece really needs. So we're gonna start with, um, I don't even actually use any tools, I just use my hand because the banner is so soft, we didn't have to anneal it because we soldered it and the heat from soldering it made it all nice and soft and pliable. So I'm just gonna use my fingers to wrap it around the pendant and you'll notice once you do that first wrap or bend back, you could feel the metal starting to harden, get work hardened again. So now you really do need your pliers. So I'm gonna come in with my round nose pliers and grab the edge of the banner and fold it back, twisting it back towards you or towards the front of the pendant. So just imagine like you're folding it. Or you actually are, you don't have to imagine. So you're gonna do that again. Stick the plier, the round nose pliers in and just twist your wrist back towards you and take a look at it. You could do it again and supporting the banner that's on the front of the pendant with your thumb. And that gives you a good um, anchor to really get a good fold. So, if you could tell there that we created a fold. It's sticking kind of far out. So I'm gonna use my chain nose pliers to kind of bend it down a little bit more. Get a really good fold in it. You can see you kind of have to work with it a little. Don't be afraid to um, 
just try to make it do what you want it to do. So it's a little tweaking here and there until you get it into the right spot. There you go. So that's it for the banner. And now we could do the leaves, which are the little ovals here. We're going to create these, bend those to become leaves. And I'm going to use a bench block with this. So what I do is use my chain nose pliers and imagine you're folding a crease in there. So I just see the halfway point, get a good grip on it and use the bench block to fold it in half, get a little angle going there. And then I use the chain nose again to do like a little accordion. I'm just folding it up. So it, it looks really ugly right there. But once you unfold it, again, using your chain nose pliers, you create a little leaf. So each time you do the little accordion down the oval, it's like the little veins in a leaf. So now you do the flowers. Same thing, each section of the flower, that's where you want to put your chain nose pliers. And I put the tip of the chain nose right in the center. And then fold it at an angle, go to the next section, and just keep rotating. And again, just like with the banner, the more folds that you do, you'll really feel the metal getting harder. That's why the bench block is a good tool to have. You're gonna feel it. There you go. And at this point, it's really curved. So you could even come back in using your chain nose and fold each petal back down. You can leave one up if you wanted. But it really gives it a different look. This guy here, if you notice, it has a little loop, but I really wanted to use a small circle. So what we're going to do is use um, some fat daddy cutters. We're going to just cut that little loop off really close to the edge. Careful when you cut it that it doesn't fly. I'm not really going to worry about the rough edge because we're going to be bending it and it's going to be hidden under the layers of the flowers. So this one I'm just going to create like a star effect. Fold it in half or no, maybe a pizza, not a star. Just create some lines. Oops. And flatten it back out. So it kind of gives it a cool little look. And when we put all these together on the pendant, you'll really see your piece coming together. Like that. So let's fold the rest. Now that we have all of our flowers folded and all the leaves folded, now we can kind of play with our design. So how I like to do it is I just start picking pieces up and placing it on my piece to see where I think it should go. So we did a variety of sizes and leaves to really create different layers. Um, the leaves I specifically like because you can kind of tuck them in underneath and have them peeking out. And we're going to use the nuts and bolts. So it kind of is more forgiving than if you were to rivet it because you could kind of change the positions of your pieces before you screw them down completely. This is just a really loose layout, obviously, because they keep moving around. But I think I'm going to do something like this. Kind of looks like a jumbled mess, but 
we're going to make it so it actually lays out so you can see all the writing and we're going to add some of these leaves in there too tucked in underneath so i'm going to put it down and now we're going to start punching holes and how how you want to do this is instead of punching holes in everything all at once you don't want to do that because if you notice i have a small flower on top of a big flower and leaves underneath because you could pile them up in different positions so if you were to punch your holes all in the center, then you would be limited to where you put those. So I'm going to pick up this guy first, and I'm going to use our 1.8 punch, punch, hole punch plier to punch a hole in the center. So once we take it, create your first hole, we are going to use that as a guide of where to use your Sharpie, I'm going to mark a little mark on the pendant, if I could get the Sharpie to work. There we go. So that, and I'm going to put this down in a spot where I'm going to remember where it goes. So just kind of mimicking the layout and just repeat the process. So punch a hole, put it back down on the piece where you want it. And I'm kind of putting it so the petal falls in between the words right there. So I want to make sure that this one is in that specific spot. So I mark that. And the leaves are going to go tuck, tuck in underneath. So I know that I'm going to punch the hole in those. And I have this little paper thing on here. I'm going to take that off because I can't see. But I'm just, these already have a hole in the center. If you can see that. I'm just going to try to center the hole punch plier right in that same spot. There we go. I want to show you this using the small flower. I think they look really cute with two leaves underneath it. So that guy's going to go there. Sometimes they're really hard to take off, but just got to work with it. Okay, so now if you look at everything that's down here, it looks really messy and chaotic, but in my brain, I know where everything goes, so hopefully you do too. So this guy with these leaves are for this dot here. This big guy, I probably should have put up here so you guys remember that. It goes on the top hole right there. And this little cluster here is going to go here. So why don't we just go ahead and connect these parts all together right now. So what we can do is all those marks that we made on your pendant with a Sharpie, let's punch those holes now. So... going to go around in every spot. Okay, so now we have this hole right here. And if you notice, if I try to use these same hole punch pliers, it doesn't reach, uh-oh, no matter what angle I go into. So what you can do is use your long jaw 1.5 mil hole punch pliers. And this, the hole is smaller, so what you're going to need to do is after you punch it, you're going to have to drill it out a little bit or um, file the hole out. 
with a round file and it's just barely too tight, too small, so you don't have to do too much. What you can do too is if you have a drill, you could also use your drill to drill the hole if it's in the center. Let's see if that works. I'm just going to test it with a screw. Yep, it works. Yay. So at this point, what we're going to do now is layer everything back or put everything, all the pieces together. So how I like to do it is I'll put this down, the pendant down, and I'll grab my first piece, the flower, and I'll drop my bolt in there, my screw. And I want two leaves on this guy. So I'm gonna put the two leaves on there. Or I think I want two leaves. Let's see how that looks. I'm gonna put it in the spot that I wanted. And I'm holding it from behind just to see what it looks like. So I think that's cute. So I'm gonna leave that one there and to secure its spot, I'm holding my finger so the bolt doesn't fall out, the screw. And using your hex wrench, it's a little bit, you feel all thumbs because it's so tiny. But once you get it in there, you're just gonna screw that on. And I don't do anything as far as doing it super, super, super tight, and I don't trim it yet until the whole piece is set. So you can make any little adjustments. So if you wanted to loosen up the bolt, you can, so you could adjust your leaves. So that's pretty cool, right? So let's go on to the next one. And again, I'm gonna put that down and just going to do a little tester. We're just going to plop that in and see if I want that there. That was the original spot I had planned. And I put the flower, oopsies, little baby flower with the leaf on. Right there. You could twist it around, you know, really play around with it and see what angle you want these flowers to go in. So I like that, but it's going to be too hard to screw them both in at the same time. So I'm going to take that one off first. Do this guy. So hold your finger so nothing falls out. Grab your hex wrench and get it in there. And what's cool about these is you, when you tighten it, if you have it at an angle when it's layered on top of something like that, notice it's tilted. That's cool. I like that because it's just, it's just a layer, but you don't have to worry about the bolt being crooked in the back. That's not a big deal because you're going to cut that and file that down. So I'm going to leave that like that and just keep building it up. But I think I want the leaf to go that way. Like so. So again, hold it down. And if you notice by the third flower, it got a lot easier to hold. You get more comfortable with all your tools and it doesn't feel like you're dropping everything. So that's kind of good. And again, remember you get twisted around to the right spot. Now this big flower, I want it right there, but then it hides the leaf underneath. So if you can't see the leaf, then you know why have it there so this is why we don't trim it so I'm gonna undo that one 
and work backwards. Because I want the big flower to be in the background. So we'll do that one first. Like that. Like so. So you could still see your words. You're all, you could twist it a little because the E was a little hiding there. Now, when we add this flower, yeah, like that, the leaf can lay on top of the flower. Like so. So I really am kind of forcing it in that position, holding it with two fingers. So when I put the bolt on, feels a little weird, but once you tighten it, it's going to look really good. So like that. So doesn't that look much better than if it was hiding behind the big flower? Okay, so now we have, I wanna show you how to layer up two flowers. So I want this, actually exactly how it was laying. I want it to look like that with one leaf coming out behind it, but a little bit more layered on top of each other. So instead of punching the hole in the middle of this flower, I'm going to punch it on the little petal right there. Okay. And so if that is going to be, let's see, right there so it's not hiding any of your words, right? So again, use your Sharpie to mark the spot on your pendant. We need the hole. Then we can punch the hole in the middle of the little tiny flower and your leaves again following the pattern of the hole that's already existing okay so this is the last one so um, trying to remember what is on the bottom so big flowers on the bottom. So we'll put that on first and then the tiny flower. Oh, nope, did it wrong. The tiny flower is going to go on the top. Then the big flower right there. So see how it's off to the side. And then each little leaf like so. So cute. Oh, I dropped it. Then the more you the more you put on, it's gonna be feel a little weird and not wanna fit as much, but so it's not really working because the leaves are in the way, so I'm gonna flip the leaves to the other side. And they fell off, so start over.
Okay. So maybe like this. I think that looks good. Like so. <laughs> so again, holding it into place. And screwing it together. So now we just, before we cut off the backs of the bolts, we want to make sure that we have them all tightened up. So I'm just going to go through each one and make sure it's tight. That one felt a little loose. I just want to check the front to make sure it's in the same position that I want it to be in. So tightening, tightening, and then before we cut, we just make sure everything looks good, all good to go. Okay, so now I'm going to put the hex wrench down, and we're going to use our Fat Daddy cutters because they're heavy duty. We don't want to use our nice small cutters for this job. We don't want to ruin them. So I am going to put the cutters pretty far down. I don't know if you could see the little threads of the screws there, but I'm going to cut it off and you can see there's a lot left over, not too much. Let's trim those guys. If you notice, I'm putting my hands over it because if those go flying, you don't want it to poke you in the eye or anything. So they are a little long, so I'm going to trim a little bit more. See how much? That's a lot of filing we would have to do. So I'm going to trim a little bit more. Okay, I think we're good. So, see all the little leftovers there? So you don't want that sitting on your neck because that's just not going to be comfortable. So now I like to use an emery board to file down or sand the edges of these bolts down. So I like this because it's flat and it's on a stick so it's not going to curve in any direction. It's just kind of it does all the work for you. So just, just like you're file, filing your nails. I'm just checking to see what the edge looks like. You could, you could use any file you like, but I just tend to you gravitate towards these guys. So, let's see. I think we're looking good. So now that I've used the core grit, now I'm going to move on to something a little bit softer. Um, just to soften it up a bit. It doesn't take much. So just use your finger and feel any rough edges that you might want to get rid of. But that is it. It is all nice and soft and smooth. And now we could oxidize.
Now we are ready to oxidize our piece. But if you notice, I'm wearing really pretty gloves. So we want to remember safety first. Gloves, safety glasses, and then we are ready to go. So I'm going to use silver black. How I like to use it is I use a Q-tip and I have a little water bath next to me. So I'm dipping my Q-tip inside the silver black and I'm just swiping it all over. And I, I really like to get in each of the little folds and everywhere I could get to. And, oh, but before I continue, you know what, I realized I didn't put the cap back onto the silver black, so let's do that. You always wanna make sure you put the cap back on because that would be part of safety first. So let's do that. That's done. So now we could continue. And now I'm going to dip it in the water. And I'm rubbing it with my finger because it's kind of a weird um, reaction that the silver black has with the copper. And it kind of flakes off sometimes. So I'm letting that happen and kind of speeding up the process by rubbing it with my finger. And I'm taking a look at it again and seeing if I want to go back and fill in any spots. I like it to look really worn and antique. So I like the pieces to have dark spots and light spots. I think it looks cool. So, I, oops. So I think that's good, I like it. So because we used the acid to oxidize this piece and we dipped it in the water, there are trace amounts in the water, on the Q-tip, on the piece. So just to be safe, we're gonna leave everything in the water and then we're gonna add a tablespoon of baking soda to this water bath to neutralize everything before we dispose of the water. So after it's completely dry from the neutralizing bath, make sure, make sure it is really, really, really dry because what we wanna do is use a Pro Polish pad and if it's wet, then the Pro Polish pad gets really goopy and it doesn't work. So it's dry and I want to make my stamping stand out a little. So I'm gonna Pro Polish that guy up a little, the banner. So see how shiny that got? And I like to just do like the surface of wherever the Pro Polish pad lands. I'm not gonna like get in there and really get in each little cracks because I like each crack and fold to stay really, really dark. So if you just swipe the Pro Polish pad across. It just gets the high points and makes them shiny. And that's exactly the look that I'm going for. You could go back around and hit any spots that you want to, like the bottom of the pendant, like right on the edge. I think that would look nice, shiny. But that is it. Add your jump ring, put it on a chain, and you are finished.